The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. The things pertaining to the believer in this church age being termed out as alakenicatesis at the same time, telling that he is a light of this world and salt of the earth, is a great principle that we can learn the importance of God being light, God being love, and God being in spirit. Dear brethren, whenever we have a passage that you are a salt of this earth, being mandated by Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is of great lessons to be learned. So why did our Lord choose to compare his disciples to salt? And what does this mean for us? First of all, salt was extremely valuable. Soldiers were allotted a salary money for purchasing salt. And salt was carried for considerable distances because it is essential to life. If there is too little, the functioning of the brain and the nervous system is impaired. If there is too much, the person becomes thirsty and will drink until the proper balance is been restored. Therefore, when we act as a salt of the earth, we will arouse in the unsaved a great thirst for the water of life. But we, the believers of the church age, have never known what it is that we should be acting as salt of this earth. We ourselves are not compatible with the things pertaining to the fellow believers in the church age. Having various denominations, having various zealousies and cults, a fellow believer doesn't be happy with a man wherewith he can get back and look and consider how truthful it would be for them to really concentrate upon Bible doctrine. But rather, this man, rather loving Christ, he loves upon himself, more into the greatest depthness. And he doesn't know how to create thirst among unbelievers as well, so that they can come back and look and realize what is it, the holy walk that you're walking. What is it, the witnessing of your life? What is it that it could be greater that action speaks more louder than the words? And why is it so that we are not capable of understanding this simple principle? Because we are not purchasing in our salary the salt. The salary wherewith the soldiers was been allotted could be compared to the grace that Lord has given to us. And each and every day is a great salary for us. And each and every day we need to acquire doctrine. The outward man perishes, inward man has to be renewed. And that salt when we acquire according to the holy walk, according to the walk among these powers and crooked nations, we can rise thirst in them. Among the unbelievers we can rise. But we ourselves are not capable of having a great thirst among the believers. How can you rise thirst among the unbelievers? That is of a great failure that you and I need to understand today. We are not capable of understanding the simple principles of the doctrine that can really change the life of many people in this world. So when we act as a salt of the earth, we will arouse among the unbelievers a great thirst for the water of life, so that they can come to know, and they will come to Jesus our Lord, for the water that springs up into eternal life, and never thirst again. But we are not thirsting first for the pure word of God so that we can show forth for others not to be thirsted again in their life. Isn't it a great failure on our part? Absolutely a great failure on our part that we are not capable of understanding the simple truths. Why is it that we are not capable of understanding the simple truths? Because we do not love that great Lord. We are just acting hypocritically as if we are loving and we are worshipping the Lord with our lips, not with our heart. A circumcised heart wherewith it can really circulate not the garbage but the doctrine. The greater the failure to circulate doctrine in your soul or in your heart, the greater will be the failure for you to clear that garbage in your soul. That's why since you longer keep the garbage, the longer your failure to walk a holy walk with the believers, far less you can walk a holy and precious walk with unbelievers.
so that the unbelievers can come back and look upon you and tell what are you exactly in Christ, so that they can come back and thirst for you, that your attitude, your work, your relaxation in the knowledge of Bible doctrine can cause them great thirst. But what is happening today? Neither we are able to purchase with the salary given to us that great salt that is purchased Bible doctrine. Neither we are producing among the unbelievers the great thirst so that they can come and look what exactly their thirst could be cleared out forever and forever when they could walk according to the principle of Bible doctrine. And second more, salt has been used as a preservative. The salting of meat and fish to preserve them is a common practice in the old time, in the, in the present as well. The life of the Christian should help prevent moral decay in our immediate environment. Not only morally, we have to come back virtually as well. The salt, the way, doctrine which preserves your attitude. Our Lord being telling to those people the greater cost of a discipleship. If salt loses its savor, what for it has been used? It is neither fit for the master's use, nor for the dung hill. But when we are being fit for the master's use, the dung hill should be corrected by the salt that is accumulated in our soul. But since salt has not been accumulated in our soul, we are not capable of understanding that how important would be the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to give us, to retain, to recollect, and to learn the word of the Lord. The greater the failure to understand the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will be the greater failure for them to know the realization of the salt. Because God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in biblical truth. And Lord God the Father in heaven is seeking and searching those believers who worship him in spirit and in truth. We cannot stay back here without worshiping the Lord in spirit. We cannot stay back without worshiping the Lord in truth. Until and unless you fail to accumulate that doctrine in your soul, that salt in your soul, you are not a preservative. And we the believers are failing to preserve this doctrine in our soul. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free, saith our Lord in John 8.32. You shall know the doctrine, you shall take the salt, and salt shall be a preservative for you to be free from these worldly thoughts, from this worldly attitude, from these worldly moral activities. First, neither we are capable of having a proper balanced brain in order by taking that salt, because less salt, if it has been taken, you will be absolutely out even proven clinically today's sophisticated technology. What importance of salt it is. When we meet a doctor, doctor says, your thyroid will come because of the less of salt that you're going to consume. And thyroid controls all other functions of your body. And in return, you need to take salt so that it could be absolutely balanced, not more nor less. So that your brain can function properly. How is our spiritual brain that is functioning today? When there is no intake of salt, how can it function? The greater the salt, it can give you thirst. The greater the thirst for Bible doctrine, Lord is going to clear it out. But today following the cheap gimmicks, the tricks, the trends of the so-called Christendom, will cause many people not to be number one for Christ. Number one representative among the unbelievers to cause them greater thirst for Christ. That's why they are not even worried to look what is dispensation. They are not even worried to look what is exegesis. Far less they can come and take the isagogical, categorical and exegetical explanation of the word day by day, day by day, day by day. Bible talks about day by day. Biblical principle says about day by day. Renovation of your thinking. The metamorphomai should come day by day. Not metamelomai, which is not at all there. It is metanoia, the true repentance. The true change of mind, the true change of thinking. 
the greater the failure to get the true and right metamorphomai, the greater will be. No salt in your brain to be balanced, to function properly. The nervous systems will get impaired. Without proper knowledge of Bible doctrine, how many people have been impaired today and they have been termed out as ineptizoid believers? I'm not asking for any question. I'm not asking for any answer. How many believers are there among the midst of today's apostasy? You can search it out. And why so many believers are not capable of comprehending towards the knowledge of Bible doctrine? Do you know that? No principle of salt. Salt is not being used in their life to balance their brain properly, to produce thirst among unbelievers. Salt is not being used to preserve meat. That is what their soul, their life. So that they could not be indulging themselves in the lust pattern of the sin nature. So that when their obedience is ready, they can get into every thought for captivity for Christ. The greater the failure, dear brethren, the greater their failure to preserve and to be salt for Christ on this earth. The life of the Christian should help prevent moral decay in our immediate environment. Remember, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ tried to engage the consciousness of those with whom he spoke. Some accepted his teaching, but others rejected it. None remained com complacent in his presence. No two that he could speak with complete freedom because he lived a perfect life. Are we exhibiting a Christ-like life to our associates? A perfection of the light, life will come when our thinking is guaranteed. When our thinking has been made sure through the knowledge of Bible doctrine. When our thinking has been accomplished by the virtue of Bible doctrine. Then what are we doing without that? We are not capable of looking it. Neither we are capable of understanding it because we don't want to be like Christ. And dear brethren... Will a lion tell to a lion after it's being born, I don't want to be like you. I want to be a dog. I want to be X, Y, Z. I want to be other part apart from being a lion again. If you're a cub, you will turn out to become a lion again in the future. When we are being born in Christ, we have to be like Christ. Sooner the better. And later the worse. The worse because you've already been indulging in self into the punitive action that could be taken care of upon you by warning discipline, intensified stage of discipline, and then sin unto death. We are here to do God's will, to be like Christ. To be like Christ demands the knowledge of Bible doctrine. The greater the failure to be in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, the greater the failure in our life to execute the protocol plan of God, to execute this unique spiritual life, to come back and understand why I have been kept alive even after so many days after salvation. Your position is superior then to the chief fallen angel known as Satan. But experientially it takes time, time, time. And it's a day-by-day -day process. There is much that you have to learn. There is much that you have to be inculcated. There is much that you have to go back. And how many days more you need not to be the preservative of doctrine in your soul, dear brother, and you decide. Finally, pure salt is a very stable compound. Its melting point is very high. And its boiling point is still higher. If you are like salt, we will be stable and consistent in our melting point, in our boiling point. We will not boil at the slightest provocation or melt in the face of fierce opposition, as our Lord did and told to Ezekiel as well. These people are rebellious people, but you don't be rebellious to me. You learn what I say for you to eat. And you go and proclaim the truth. Though you have the fierce opposition, you need not really melt. Because I have made you adamant flint stronger. 
and the great work for you is what? If they are 99.9% .9 adamant to reject thy word, you have been made 199.9% .9 greater than them so that you can tell again the word. Not to be melted out that there is some fear opposition. Not to be boiled out because there is some slightest provocation. And what are we telling? You have been made adamant flint. Your work is to finish God's work. Your work is to execute the protocol plan of God. Your work is to inculcate from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 22, 21, extrapolating particularly the mystery doctrine of the church age, the unique spiritual life. The greater the failure for us to understand this great unique spiritual life, the greater the failure of our life that why I have been kept alive in this church age, even after our salvation. So, when we face the heat, our composure and serenity will be maintained if we believe that God is the loving planner of our lives. Then, trusting God, may all of us be useful Christians, bringing the word of life to a needy, dying world through the principle of salt. Salt being doctrine, light being ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to shed light, to know light, and to understand the true light of Jehovah. Dear brethren, remember once again to recollect, number one, if salt is not been properly given, there will be imbalance, impaired in your brain and nervous systems. If salt is been given more, you will come back to the thirsty so that the people can come back and thirst from you. Number two, the salt is been used as a preservative doctrine resident in your soul. And number three, salt is been given for us. The very great character, the boiling point and the melting point. Not to be easily provocated, not to be easily opposed by the fierce anger but rather stay stable, 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 so that the people can come and know what stability, the faith rest technique that you have learned from the principle of the knowledge of Bible doctrine, so that people can know the truth, and the truth shall set them free. When you are representing that you know the true Lord. So dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide as we continue in the next day. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that I was going to have to know about the salt principle of a believer in this earth. We pray that Lord God the Holy Spirit will understand us these things under the enlightenment ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit so that we can manifest clearly what is salt and why are we being called the salt of this earth. But we ask it in Christ's name, Sovereign Lord. Amen.